Okay, uh, it's 6.38. I'm going to call to order this uh, special meeting of the um, Board of Selectmen. Uh, it is a regular open meeting. Um, and uh, there is only one item on the agenda, uh, and then we will adjourn the meeting. Uh, that, that item is a, uh, an approval of a demo demolition order or a condemnation order on 131 Elliott Street. And just for facts, uh, on July 23rd, um, after an inspection by our building commissioner, um, noting that uh, there was some severe deterioration in the condition of the building at 131 Elliott Street, uh, our building inspector issued a letter to uh, Carrick Realty Trust, um, basically saying that the, um, in accordance with Mass General Law, uh, the building uh, is condemned and either has to be um, brought up to um, standards um, or demolished. In order to um, come full cycle with that, the Board of Selectmen have to uphold basically that condemnation order and that's the business we're here for tonight. Uh, so we do have one motion um, and, and maybe I should explain too to people listening why it's taken from July 23rd till November, what's today? Uh, 20th. 20th, 20th to, to do this. And, and the reason was, right after this uh, condemnation letter was issued, uh, Carrick Realty and the Conleys pulled a, um, or went to our building commissioner and requested a demolition permit. Um, and we had been going under that assumption for quite a while that the building was being demolished. Uh, and later to find out that they decided not to demolish it. So now we do have to come back and basically either, um, you know, come back and, and uphold the uh, condemnation. So we do have a uh, so proposed <coughs> motion. You want to do the motion first and then talk about it? Sure. Yeah, that's the proper way. <coughs> want me to read it or? Uh? Yeah, well, never mind. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, this motion to confirm the July 23, 2012 letter from Building Commissioner Joseph Prondek to Carrick Realty Trust in which Mr. Prondek indicated that the building at 131 Elliott Street was unsafe and dangerous and directed Carrick Realty to remove the structure in its entirety or make it safe in accordance with the Massachusetts State Building Code, uh, 8th edition by 12 noon uh, on the day following the receipt of this notice. Second. Okay, motion been made seconded. Okay, any further discussion? Yeah. So just to get the timeline right again, <clears throat> Mr. Prondek, you sent a, a letter to Mr. Connolly condemning the building Correct. and ask him to make it safe. And within a few days, he came in and he applied for a demolition permit. Correct. A couple of days after that, he then filed suit against the town. Is that correct? We know that to be true now. Same day. The same day same as? Day. Yeah, filed an appeal of the 27th order. 27th and the 27th. Okay, you're certain of that? I've got the dates right here. Okay. So my, my question is, um, I, I'm confused as to why a person, and I like Mr. Connolly, why he would file an application to demolish a building and at the same time file a suit against the town. So by filing suit against the town, that prevented him from making the building safe. Is that correct? No. Necessarily, we were we we were in the process. Once once we saw that the, we understood that the process was moving forward, we had chosen to demolish our portion of the building. We had information that Conley was going to, or Carrick Realty was going to remove their portion of the building. We then went to the T to iron out the procedure of how you carry out that demolition next to a live rail line. That really took the majority of the time, which. I guess then enabled Conley's appeal to sit unnoticed because they never notified us until October that they had filed that appeal and they weren't required by the court or the law to do that. Okay, so it was filed in July 27th, you yes. said? Yes. But we never knew about it till October. And they had Correct. 90 days to appeal. They had 90 days to notify us, I'm sorry. Okay, and when you sent out the, the letter of condemnation, mm -hmm. how long did, it, did you state for them to fix their or repair their building? Well, the, the Mass General Law Chapter 143 
um, requires that it that you and there may be a correction needed in this motion because it says you must begin to repair or make safe by noon the day following receipt of the notice yeah, I guess our motion will be uh, by 12 noon of the the date of this motion it, the motion was probably correct yeah because then it, it, it in turn directs me to take more immediate action but it has to begin okay and is there any end date no there's no prescribed end date because it's assumed that things are going to go along um, in a in a um, in a timely fashion uh, in in fact there is a section of the general law that says um, you know no appeal shall be used to unnecessarily delay uh, what needs to happen. So the suit that Connolly, that Carrick Realty filed was not to stop the repair of the building, correct? Or to stop? I uh, believe it's to, it's, it's to stop us from forcing him to do anything, I believe. Yes, it's because it's appealing the condemnation it's order. It's appealing the, this, which, this which, actual letter. Uh, in actuality, because we never upheld the condemnation <coughs> until we're discussing it now, there really, there really is no basis for appeal because there is no condemnation per se without us carrying through with our order of business. Right, but I guess my point is, what, what's the use in sending out a, a letter of condemnation if there's no expiration date to it? Um, meaning, and again, just to give an example of what I went through when, when I had a building partially collapse in the city of New Bedford, I got a letter of condemnation, but it says you have to have it down within 30 days. And when I didn't, they took me to court. And the, and the court forced me to take it down, which was the right thing to do. But if there's, a, if there's no end date, I don't see how... Mr. Connolly, you know, would have rushed into taking it down. I know he's supposed to begin it by noon next day, but I mean, beginning taking a building down or making it safe could, oh, and you, and you could mean fixing a front well, door. Or I, something. I mean, the law does, does does further explain that that you have to proceed in in a, in a timely fashion. Uh, given that the law can't really anticipate every condition that that's going to come up, uh, right? But again, the the. the the law is pretty specific that it, it you have to begin to take it down or repair it and you have to move along in, in, a, in, a, in a quick fashion and that's what's outlined uh, I think the law actually in, uses the term speedily that's what's outlined in chapter 143 section 6 7 8 9 and 10 yeah. so that is referenced in, in the combination okay uh, a couple of years ago in, under the building code it sounds like what happened in New Bedford was they um, they uh, probably acted under the maintenance section of the building code, which then allowed them to file criminally after the expiration of 30 it was days. Was a criminal complaint, yes. Right. right. The state B board of building regulations and standards has then has since advised us and, revi and revised uh, the building code, and they don't want us to take that route anymore. They want us to rely solely in an unsafe building solely on Mass General Laws Chapter 143, Section 6 through 10. So again, so there's never an end date in, well, I, I, in these I guess condemnation there, there, there is in the sense that if he doesn't act substantially and immediately, then the Board of Selectmen can order the building demolished. So is that what we're here for? No, we're here just to uphold at this point and give him up till. Well, uh, um, I, 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 can, I can get a copy of the law and... No, well, there's no need. I'm just, trying to, I'm just trying to figure yeah. out what we're actually doing here. If we already send out the letter of condemnation, and he didn't make it safe, but he filed suit against the town to, to it, stop. It, it, it does, in some respects, it authorizes me or the town to take steps to get this building removed, whatever that may be. So if we agree on this tonight, if we vote on this tonight, what is the next step for, for you and for... Well, the well, the next step, I would assume, <coughs> is, is um, this will be... This will be Appealed in court, and in the details ironed out at that level. 
He current, my understanding, he currently has no basis for his appeal, even though he filed one. Is the, is the, um, if you read the first sentence, it, it, right in the first sentence. So our legal counsel has told us there is no basis for that appeal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because it says in the first sentence that he's appealing the order. In there is no order. There is no. no but while order. this is actually sitting in, in some, somebody's yes. desk in a court, can we force him to take it down, is my question. And that goes back to the issues that Joe is going to do. And your pen is over the date that you asked me for, July 27th? same date that the demo application got stamped in here. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I mean, I can understand the, the suit against the town. What confuses me is why, why an application to take the building down and a suit against the town would be filed the same day. That's confusing. And that can, really that can only be answered by Carrot Realty. I understand that. that. But here's, the, here's the demo permit and here's the people that um, are going to do the work for uh, Mr. Conley, which is the same company. Right. So correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Joe, but uh, your, your letter to Carrick Realty is not sufficient to actually order the building with, without the selectmen's vote upholding it to order the building demolished or brought oh, to no, no, I, I have ordered it down. And, and then if he fails to act, we as a town, if you uphold this order, we have a town, we, we then have the right, pending the appeal, to come in and remove it. Take whatever, whatever action necessary. Okay. But again, can we take this action tonight when he has appealed your decision? No, the, 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 the status of the current appeal is, is it's, it's it does not exist. Because it doesn't, it's not there. It, Joe's but he's letter filed, he's filed isn't it with there. The he filed it with the court, but there's no basis to it because you didn't sign off on it. Well, I guess that, that's the part that's confusing because I'm hearing two different things. And I think Dennis is confused because of that. Yeah, no. You tell us on the one hand that, that the letter was sufficient to, for them to either fix it or take it down. So is there a legal basis for that? And what we're here doing then is, is basically, if he doesn't act within 12 hours, ordering it demolished. But that's not what the motion really said. Right. So I'm confused as hell right now. I, I don't know what I'm voting on. Anymore. I join you in, um, in the confusion. Um, it, I think it's regrettable, and I feel everybody feels this way, that in a sense that this matter is even being dealt with by us, that you know, it would have been great if the town <coughs> uh, planning board would have been able to uh, strike up an acceptable uh, project uh, with the Conleys and, and that things were going smoothly. I think everybody uh, has the same objective of uh, wanting to revitalize um, that area, but this issue is starting to really confuse me. I mean, there's simple things like, let's say we've talked about a hole in the roof. It's been disputed where the hole is. Is it on Conley's property well, you know, or our property? property. It doesn't, it, What's the answer to that? We're, we're going to find that out, but it really doesn't but matter. Why should the building we know does, that if the now, building falls getting, down, it really doesn't I'm getting matter. getting frustrated. We don't know whose property the hole in the roof is on. Well, first of all, we're taking down ours, but we believe it's on the Conley side. But regardless, if the building falls down, the, and the building's but attached if, to one another. If the we're making informed decisions, we should be informed about what we're talking about. And it's just like, for instance, there's even there's, dis there's disputes on the <coughs> survey of the property. And, you know, somebody like myself, I like the facts. I like to feel comfortable in my position. And the chair just said he's confused. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm confused be because I uh, thought we were coming into the way it was originally explained to me is that we had to um, basically ratify the condemnation order in order to make it legal. Now, I'm hearing a different thing now, and that's what's confusing me. I'm hearing that the condemnation order is legal, and what we're trying to do is, is order it taken down, and, and that's not what the motion says. And, and again, and to your point, Tom, where I'm getting confused is uh, Mr. Prondack, rightfully so, sent out a condemnation letter to take the building down. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Connolly came in and he applied for a demolition permit. The same day, without telling us, he filed suit against the town to prevent him from taking the building down. Okay? To stop Mr. Uh, Prandak's notice of condemnation in a court. So we're here now to, we're backing up to July to, to really, I don't know what we're supposed to do, to say, yes, it's okay for Mr. Prandak to send out a condemn no, uh, condemnation notice. Yet Mr. Connolly is protected by the court because he has filed. Well, he's not protected yet because he... But it's filed, Tom. But, but he had no basis for filing. We could dispute it, and it would get thrown out, and he'd refile it again. But, you know, so I mean, it's kind of semantics, but, uh, but technically what we're being told is there's no basis whatsoever for that appeal. But we're being told by whom? Our attorneys, Lenny Kessler. Yeah, but it's a judge has to tell you, not, not a... Well, no, no clearly, clearly, no, yes. no disrespect to the, the, the lawyers, I think. But, but his, informed decision, his informed opinion is that there is, no, there is no basis for that appeal because there has been no condemnation. It hasn't been condemned yet because we haven't acted on it. So, okay, so let me get this clear. So in future, Mr. Prandek, when you send out a letter of condemnation to any other building in town, does it have to be voted on by this board? Let me let me see if I can walk through the, the, the entire process. Mass General Law says that when I am made aware of a situation and the building becomes dangerous, that I am to notify the owner of that dangerous condition. And I am to give them until noon the day following the receipt of the notice to begin to repair or make safe that dangerous condition. What the law specifically says, if the then there are two two routes we can go when the owner refuses. Either the selectman can come to the conclusion that the building is especially dangerous, and order me to take the necessary steps to remove or repair the to to re, to make the structure safe. Okay, remove or repair. Or addition, or, or in lieu of that, what I can do is do what's called convene a board of survey, which is the head of the fire department, the town engineer, and a disinterested party, which is typically an engineer. And we can, we can kind of skip this whole step, and then I can get to that conclusion through that process. When I originally came to the board to go this route, the reason at the time that you didn't quote unquote uphold my order was because nobody was sure how we were going to get the funds. Unfortunately, the law was written sometime in the 40s when if the town needed extra money, all they had to do was raise the tax levy. We can't do that anymore. Um, so the law, although archaic in nature, um, it, it requires us to act, but it doesn't give us necessarily the means to do it. So we didn't. We, we had to look for the funds. We had to find the funds to be able to do that. So it didn't make any sense for me to then go into the other part of the process with the Board of Survey. Um. Okay, but, but I, I guess to, to back up a step, when, when you issue the letter in order to make, we have to give you the power to enforce that? Yes. So that's basically what we're granting you right now is the power to enforce Correct. your letter. Correct. And, and what what legal counsel is saying is without that power, there, it, without bestowing on the building commissioner the power to enforce his order, there is no appealable. Conleys don't have to do anything, and we haven't done anything until we at say, this point. Until we give him the power to do okay, it. Okay, now I'm getting it. I am too. <laughs> so you, yeah, you send out a letter of condemnation mm -hmm. to begin work within by noon the next day. Yep. No work is done by Mr. Connolly. Right. There's no expiration date on when he has to finish the repairs, but he has to start it by the next day. Right. To your satisfaction, it's not being done. Correct. So you've got to come back to this board mm -hmm. and get a vote from us to, I guess, go to the next step, to enforce the, the, the first condemnation notice. Is that correct? What, what, what this vote can do, potentially, is give me the authority to 
potentially put Conley's building out for bid. We could go in and tear it down. Except that he's going to appeal that. Until it appeals. But he, and so if he doesn't act to, if, if we ratify your condemnation letter and he does not act to secure the building to bring it up to standard, then <coughs> without coming back to this board, you can just order it removed? I, I can, but I would have to find, I would have to the find money a funding it. source. Right. Obviously, I can't do that right. without funding. Okay. Um, so, but that, yes, that's would the power have to, we've been would have to come to back you. to the board. Um, it, it, it still really comes down to the money. It, it, right, it's a money issue, so the money would have to be appropriated, so it would have to go through town meeting. Through town day. meeting and the whole nine yards, so I can't just arbitrarily go hire a contractor to go do it, even though, you know, technically, yes, I could. Yep. We simply wouldn't because we don't have the funds, and no contract is going to do it on, on, you know, a credit card. Yeah, I think it's even illegal to award a contract without having funding. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, did Steve Connolly send you a letter stating that he was going to appeal it in July? No. You got no letter. No letter. No notice whatsoever. When when I when I I acting for the town. One of the big issues was tear, one of the complications with tearing this building down is, is the proximity to a live T line. Not only is it the cars going back and forth, but it's the live uh, catenary system or the, the electric system up above that has to be dealt with while this demolition occurs. Uh, so that means shutting down the line from Ashmont all the way to Mattapan because there's no turnaround on, 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 the, on the trolley line, so they have to bust the entire route. They can't just shut down a section of it. Then they have to have a crew come in and take the uh, electrical lines down, de-energize them, take them down. The building gets knocked to the ground and hauled away, and then they come back in and put the electric lines up. Um, it took five to seven weeks to, to get that ironed out with the T, just how that would happen. And, and, the, and the means by which we do that is, is we have to obtain a license. So I went through that entire process, and the decision was made that I would get the license not just for the town building, but for the entire project in the spirit of cooperation to try and um, expedite the process. So, so the town of Milton holds the license with the T to do that work for both our building and Conley's building. Had I known that Conley had no intention of tearing down his building, I never would have went through the painstaking task of obtaining that license. And Dennis, I can tell you that I had a, when we went for our walkthrough in that building, which was probably in early September sometime, um, Mr. Conley was at the site and he and I absolutely did not mishear him he indicated with at every intention of taking that building down that it was unsafe that we couldn't allow that to stand there was too much liability I mean he went on and on and on and on so oh I have no doubt that it's in horrendous shape that's not what I'm questioning. What I'm questioning is, if we vote on this tonight, is it going to do any good because he's already in court? Yeah, I think yes. it does because it starts the process then. Um, if we don't do it, what's going to happen is this thing is never going to go any place. If we don't do it, we're at square one. We have nothing. We have we've not told him to do anything, and he has nothing to appeal. If we do do it, the potential is there for us to get in front of a judge and, and win that case and have a judge kind of oversee all of the questions that have come up, the questions of the, the dispute of where the collapse is, the, the dispute of how we um, address the other small portions of Conley's building that address our, that, that abut our portion, the fact that uh, the, the Conleys are saying that they can't do anything with their building until the collapse portion is addressed. Yet, the collapse portion really is a relatively small area when they have an entire building that needs addressing. So, I can tell you that it, it's throughout the whole building, there are significant holes in the entire roof of the whole building, with the exception of the portion we believe is ours because right. it's much, much, much newer than any other portion of that building. Um, but the rest of it looks like Swiss cheese. Uh, the floors are punky and 
um, when you're walking on them. There, there are places where the floor has big holes in it. Uh, clearly, you can see Scott, you can see sunlight coming through the roof. It, it is our, it's our hope that this will bring judicial oversight to the whole process. That's that's the goal here, because it is fairly obvious that Carrick Realty doesn't intend. Let me retract that. The Carrick Realty has not complied with our requests, our pleas. I mean, this goes, but Mal Malcolm Larson, years ago, has been pleading with them to, to maintain and fix this building and not let it get in the condition it's gotten in. Um, uh, this, is a long, this is a long battle, and, and it, it, it seems to me that without a judge sitting there saying, Mr. Conley, you know, you've got to do this, this, and this, um, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna be playing this, um, playing this cat and mouse game. I do agree that, that all, con all control has been lost here by, by either the town and or Mr. Connolly. That um, you know, we don't know where we are. And certainly Mr. Connolly doesn't know where we are. So at this juncture, I would be in favor of moving forward with, with this request just so that somebody is in control. I, I believe that's what's going to happen. happen to. This, this will bring judicial oversight to the process, and that's what's needed. Right, because right now we're out there, we're just three sheets to the wind. Right. Nobody knows. You, you can send out all the condemnation letters you like, and nobody's taking and, it. And that will be the beginning of resolving whose portion the collapse is on, because we have a surveyor out there now trying to determine that. But it's going to be a court issue no matter what. So the only way to get that is to get it into court. In the meantime, I would hope that Mr. Connolly, and, and it may happen, might resubmit his application to the planning board. But like I said, at this juncture, I think we have to take control. Or some, at least somebody has to take control, and I would prefer that it would be the town at this point. Um, and if he does proceed in putting his application back in with the planning board, well, then we can make the steps at that time. But, but for now, I would, I would agree with moving forward. But, but my, my sole purpose for being here and, and going through this entire procedure at this point is to separate the public safety issue from the planning board issue right. and make sure that we don't <coughs> end up in the news with a building right. tragedy. Clearly, what Joe says is right, that, that you know, even if he does put his application back on the planning board, this building can't stay, stand there for another two years in the condition it's in. I mean, it's got to come back. Right. Or, 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 or be, or be fixed, and, and, and you know certainly if, 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 if they've got the engineering in place and they've done the homework and, and are ready to spend the money to fix this building as it needs to be fixed, we're, we're open to that. We always have been. Um, right. And there's basically two ways to do that. You, I, you I see no evidence the weather or, or, or that. strip everything off and shore up the steel. I mean, that's mm -hmm. basically what we're talking about. Yeah, and remove all, even in, in Conley's well, Carrick Realty's first engineer clearly said in the first engineering report that they get that all wood portions of this structure must be removed. They were, he didn't say they could be fixed. His first engineer. His first engineer. Why he and why he why that engineer is now gone and there's a new engineer on? I don't know. You wouldn't want to be a rocket science, right? scientist. <laughs> yeah. to figure that out. <laughs> What did the second engineer say? The, the second engineer says that the building can be repaired. And, and, and my position is fine. Repair it. Can you remember the, what the town's engineer said? Would the, didn't we hire an engineer? We, engineer, we hired an engineer, and, 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 that, and that engineer said that the building needs to be repaired or removed in short order. Okay, so you have two engineers that says it has to be repaired. Or Um, any further discussion? I'll just, I'd like to say that I, I certainly think that, that safety needs to be paramount. And that seems crystal clear. But as we move forward, I'd like to be crystal clear on, on, on my thought process. My thought process on, on this whole matter continues to have confusion reign, including, you know, the latest, the fact that we've been told we need a re rebid uh, on the on the demolition. 
Mm-hmm. That's confusing to me. I don't understand that, you know, if we did something wrong and it didn't quite have the right process, I'm hoping that it doesn't happen again. It's just, I think that on this issue, it's, it, there needs to be as less confusion as there does be an understanding. We understand that safety is paramount. And as we move forward, we need to be crystal clear on this moving ahead so, so that Right, this, but, Bob, but the one thing you have to understand, though, it, it is necessarily a public safety issue mm-hmm. and a money issue. They go hand in yeah. hand. We had a small, small window of opportunity to get the money by October, whenever the date of town, town meeting was. Mm-hmm. Um, and we started that process very early in the game, but it was because it took seven or eight weeks to get the information from the T. We were pushing right up against that date. We literally got these, these bids, the, the bid package. Right, and then ran it here for us to look, ran it down to the, the Warren Committee, and then got it out and got bids back in a couple of days, mm-hmm. virtually. Um, you know, and I mean, that's unfortunate, but it's not because we didn't start that process very early. I mean, we started that process back in the beginning of September, end of August. Um, you know, and, and we started that proceed process with the understanding that the whole building was coming down. And then, just before the bid was getting ready to go out, Conley pulled the rug out and said, no, the building's not coming down. So now, it, our, our bid specs right from the get-go had a problem with them because of Conley's action at the very last minute. And, and not to mention, I, I, it, it is, a somewhat archaic and confusing set of laws on top of a complicated ownership scenario. It's a complicated building. It's right up against the T. I, I mean, this is a very, very unique situation. I don't think you'll find another building quite like this situation anywhere in the country. Um, so it, it, it is a confusing and difficult um, uh, building to, to, to apply laws that were meant, intended to encompass in general unsafe conditions. The, the, that's how the laws are written, and now, but now we're trying to apply them to a very complicated building and a very com- complicated ownership yeah. situation. Oh, it yeah. makes it that much more confusing. But I will, to, to Bob's point, and I do agree with him, I, I echo your, your uh, confusion and your, I don't know, resentment towards all of this, but <clears throat> from the time the, your letter of condemnation went out, to the permit application to demolish the, the building, to the filing of a lawsuit against the town, to getting the money from the Warren Committee or the, from the from the town meeting, um, to three different structural engineering reports. You know, two are the same, one are not, yet they all stamp it. When they stamp that engineering report, it's supposed to be pretty they're supposed to be pretty even. That's another area. Yet they're, yet they're totally different. Right. So I'm going to echo what I said again at the beginning. We need to take control. Somebody needs to take control right now because it's, it's out of control. And it's only costing the taxpayers of this town money and potentially public safety. I think we believe that, yeah. that this action tonight will... So that's the reason I would be in favor of just moving this forward. Um, so that we can, so that somebody, meaning the town, can take control, and then we can make uh, more perfect decisions as we move forward. Okay. With very, very careful diligence. I think you make a good point. Somebody does have to grab control and work towards eliminating the confusion. You just mentioned engineering report. I read one engineering report. It says that the the Connolly Building is safe. I read another engineering report that says it's uh, in very poor condition. Well, I don't think anyone said it was safe. I, 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 one said it was repairable. I think they both said it was repairable. <coughs> one disagreed in but, terms of the, the they, overall condition. But I think you can get, you can get they, two professionals to... Yeah, they were two, two professional views that both were at opposite ends of the spectrum. 
Well, they weren't totally an opposite, but but I mean that that happens all the time. I mean, you, you get two you get two doctors; they're going to give you two different. You know. Yeah. You know, I find are you sick? Aren't you sick? I mean, it's it's no different. It's the it same confusing. thing. It's the same thing. It's 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 not it's not an exact science. It's a science, but you know, but but, but science isn't exact. You know, you you're looking at things and you're giving an opinion. It's not it's not a statement of fact. It's an opinion. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Welcome. I think it was important to let the public know this. I mean, you know, I, I agree. I think we'll itemize agree. everything from the beginning to where we are right now. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved.